All right, so one more example here of the integral test. So we've got the series from 1 to infinity of n over n squared plus 1. So a couple things here. Um, it, by the test for divergence, this limit would equal 0. So it may converge, it may, may diverge. Um, if we think about the function f of x equals x over uh, x squared plus 1, this is definitely a continuous function. It's a continuous uh, function because it's a rational function, and there's nothing that makes the denominator undefined. So this is continuous for all values of x. In particular, um, it's continuous also if x is greater than or equal to 1. So recall, we're starting at 1, um, our index. So, so it's definitely continuous. Uh, it's certainly positive. You know, it's certainly positive. Again, if x is greater than or equal to 1. I'm not saying it's only positive if x is greater than or equal to 1. But if you plug in positive numbers, 1 or larger, you'll get a positive on top and a positive on the bottom. So certainly it is positive if x is greater than or equal to 1. Um, you know, kind of maybe one question that's maybe a little less obvious is, is it decreasing? Because we really have to make sure about that as well. The way I would do it is just by doing the derivative, first derivative test. So we get low, we get the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, uh, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all over the denominator squared. So recall we can use the first derivative and critical points to find regions of increase and decrease and all that good stuff. So we would have 1x squared minus 2x squared. That'll leave us with a negative x squared. We would have a positive 1 also left in the numerator. So it looks like we would have 1 minus x squared over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Well, if we find the critical points for this um, by setting the derivative you know, equal to 0, there's nothing that makes the derivative undefined in this case because there's nothing that's going to make the denominator 0. Well, if we set the numerator equal to 0, we can uh, add the x squared, take the square root. We'll get x equals plus and minus 1. You know, honestly, I don't even care what the function's doing back here, whether it's increasing or decreasing. And between negative 1 and 1, I also just don't care whether it's increasing or decreasing. All I really need to know is, again, for values of, uh, of x that are 1 and larger, what's happening to the function? Well, if I take a number bigger than 1, let's say x equals 10, in the numerator, you'd have 1 minus uh, 100, which is definitely negative. In the bottom, you're squaring it, so it's always positive. So uh, f prime of 10 is definitely less than 0. So that tells us, uh, since the derivative is less than 0, that our function is decreasing. So that means we can now use the integral test. So kind of kind of step one here to uh, really justify it. So again, our series started at 1. So we're going to integrate from 1 to infinity. But I'm going to go ahead and replace that with a t and do the limit as t goes to infinity of x over x squared plus 1. Now, I'm just going to kind of integrate this off to the side, and then we'll stick the limits and uh, everything back in there. So to integrate x over x squared plus 1, well, I see something squared, and I see something to the first power. That makes me think u substitutions. So if we let u equal x squared plus 1, du is going to be 2x dx. We only need an x dx, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 half. So then uh, the x dx will be our 1 half. Then we'll have the integral 1 over u du. And well, if we integrate this, we have 1 half times the natural logarithm of u plus c. But u in this case is x squared plus 1. So that tells us uh, that uh, we'll be left with the limit as t goes to infinity. And again, after we integrate, we'll get this function. I'm going to pull the 1 half out front. We'll be left with the natural logarithm of x squared plus 1, uh, and then from 1 to t. So now if we plug in our limits, so if we plug in our limits, we'll have the natural logarithm of t squared plus 1, minus, then we'll plug in uh, x equals 1, so we'll just have the natural logarithm of 2. Well, again, the only thing I'm really interested in is what happens with this limit. Uh, is, it, is it a convergent or divergent? But as t goes to infinity, 
you know, t squared plus 1, that's certainly going to go off to infinity. And then you've got the natural logarithm of a really, really big number. Well, this does equal a really, really big number if you remember the graph of ln of x. Um, so in this case, this is going to be uh, a divergent uh, improper integral. So since the improper integral uh, diverges, likewise we can go back and say that our original series is also divergent.